going to the word of the Lord. If you will, turn with me to Genesis chapter 32. And uh, I don't plan on being before you long, but you know when a preacher says that, they wind up being long with it. Genesis chapter 32, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. When you have it, I want you to say, I have it. I gotta wait. If you can't find Genesis, come down to the altar right now. I'm gonna lay hands on you. <laughs> it's a very, very familiar text. I'm sure you've heard this story, but God has really been dealing with me as it pertains to the life of Jacob. So uh, uh, let's, let's read that. I like to hear people read, okay? That's the, uh, the Baptist part of me. I like to hear you, you read with me. Okay, so can, can we do that in concert? We're going to start on verse 24. I'm going to start on verse 24. 32 verse 24. Here we go. Let's read. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched him in the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched or broken as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, what did he say? I, uh-huh, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. You have struggled with who and with who but you did what you have you have won you have overcome Jacob said please tell me your name but he replied why do you ask my name it wasn't time for him to reveal his name he revealed that to Mary so he couldn't give it to Jacob then he blessed him there verse 30 so Jacob called the place Penel saying it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared and he said thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel for as a prince thou hast this is a good part thou hast power with whom God and with men and has prevailed for as a prince how hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. For the next few moments, I'm going to teach from the topic before I let go. Before I let go, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the awesome gift of your presence. For we understand that it is in your presence that we live, that we move, that we have our being. We thank you for sending the anointing today that breaks yokes we thank you for allowing us to not just hear this word but allow this word to permeate every aspect of our being so that when we can become more like you father help us to know that the keeping of our souls is in your hands it is in jesus name we pray amen amen somebody say before i let go Hey, y'all, we're going to get some carpet, too, so when y'all are standing alone, your, your, your feet ain't going to be hurting as, as, as much. Uh, I, need, I need somebody to praise God about that carpet. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I was born in the 70s, so I'm a 70s baby, and I got some 70s babies. That was like the dopest, you know, era to be born in because we standing in between the more seasoned folk and then these, these new folk. I don't know what they doing. I mean, we had the bomb TV shows, y'all, the bomb. I'm not going to go down there. But I remember as a kid, when I would look at TV, there would be this, uh, this, this thing that would come on the screen. It was station identification. Anybody remember that? And you'll be looking at your show, and then they'll just blurp in and be like, you have looked at W-R-A-L, and they'll, they'll announce the station identification. And so since I'm in this sanctified church, I'm going to do this experiment. I'm going to do station identification. 
okay? Now, I'm going to say, uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something, and based on your response, it's going to tell me uh, your level of expectation. So, I'm going to say something, and based on your response, it's going to reveal to me your level of expectation. Are we ready? Can we do this game? We ready? Somebody say, I'm ready. ready. Somebody say, I'm ready. ready. We have entered into the year of above and beyond. Let me say it again. We have entered into the year of above and beyond. We have entered into the year where God wants to blow your mind. We have entered into the year of the blank check. We have entered into the year of miracles, signs, and... If you believe that, give God a praise. I, I did that. I did that because, uh, Chubb, give me my clock, man, because I don't want to be up here too long. I don't want to be here too long. I did that because uh, um, God responds to our level of expectation. Amen? God not only responds to our level of expectation, but I know that God will also meet you at the level of your participation. That's what Pastor Travis was talking about. Don't expect things from God if you're unwilling to do your part. Here's why um, um, participation is important. It is important because it shows God that we are willing to do whatever it takes to position ourselves to receive what he has for us. I want you to understand that God has no desire to be a genie in a bottle where you can rub him the right way and he'll just perform a miracle. No, God's desire and intent for us is partnership. Somebody say partnership. Somebody say partnership. partnership. God, there are certain things that only God can do. I can't heal the sick. I can't raise the dead. I can't open deaf ears. But God is saying, I want you to let me do the stuff that I can do, but there's some stuff that you need to do to become a partner with, the, with me in this miracle. For example, let's think about Lazarus. When Jesus goes to, to them and they were crying and they're saying, oh God, I want you to, to, to take the Lazarus is dead and he's not, he's, he's, he's not alive anymore, he's dead. Jesus could have went to where Lazarus was, but what did he do? He says, take me to where you, do I have anybody that know the book in here? He said, take me to where you, then he said, move the stone. Now, Moody, he's omnipotent. He can do whatever he wants. But why did God say, take me to where you laid him? And then before I heal him, before I raise him from the dead, I won't do it if you're not willing to move the stone. God is saying there are miracles, signs, and wonders. There are things that I'm wanting to do in your life. But I want you to know that I want you to be a partner with me in this endeavor. In this endeavor. Endeavor. That ain't even a real word. God's desire for us is partnership. So I've learned that whenever I see or I hear a word from the Lord, I've learned to do this, Ty. I've learned to ask God, what is it requiring of me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in my office the other day and, and I, said, I said, God, you gave us this word. What is this word requiring? What is my part? And God took me to Leviticus. Now, I'm going to go ahead and be honest. I don't frequent Leviticus much. Unless I'm needing to go to sleep. I bet you ain't never heard a preacher say that. But I'm going to be honest. God took me to Leviticus and I knew it was God because I don't really go to that book a lot. And here's what the scripture says. Leviticus 26 and 10 and explains our part. It says, you will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to do what? Uh-huh. Okay, you will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to, somebody say, move it out to make room for the new. If you want the harvest, you have to move it out and make room for the new. If you want God's blessings, there are some things that you're going to have to move out to make room for the new. There are things that God is wanting to release in our lives this year that he won't release until we are willing to make room for the new. Look at somebody and say, make room for the new. Make room for the new. Now, I understand that anytime God is wanting to usher us into a new season, 
He will require you and I to release some things and let some things go. I want you to know that the cost of admission to your next level will always be a sacrifice. <laughs> sacrifice literally means to, to release something of a lower nature to make room for something of a higher nature. Sacrifice means to release something of a lower nature to make room for something of a higher nature. So look at somebody and say, you're going to need to, you're gonna need to release a sacrifice. Say it again. You're going to need to release a sacrifice. Nature understands this principle. Trees let go of their leaves in preparation for a new season. Animals shed their fur in preparation for a new season. Frankie Beverly understood this when he wrote the song, Before I Let Go. You don't, okay, okay, pastor. We got people in here to act like they don't know this song. You, you, you fronting and you faking in this sanctuary. How many of you know, Before I Let Go? No, 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 no. We're going to get in trouble. I don't want you to cancel me. But, 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 but here are the lyrics. I, I wanted to put the lyrics on the screen. I, I'm talking about the need to let some things go, to release some things in order to go into your new season. Here are the lyrics. You make me happy. This you can bet. You stood right beside me. Yeah. And I won't forget. I really love you. You should know. I want to make sure I'm right, girl. Now, y'all dancing to the song, but you don't know what Frankie's talking about. I'm a musician. I spent my life doing production work, so I'm a, So, you know what Frankie's saying? Frankie has moved into a new relationship. He's got a new situation, y'all. A new girl. And things are, you said, an entanglement. I'm a, I ain't going to, Ty, you're going to get me in trouble. But Frankie said, now, this is going well, but I want to make sure that this is what it has the potential to be because there's something I have over here in the corner that you don't know about. And before I let go of this, I need to make sure you're the right one. See, that's not how life works, unfortunately. God requires you sometimes to let go of things that you can see to lay up hold of things that you cannot see. That's what faith is. You cannot have it both ways. That is why letting go is difficult. Yeah. It's hard because it will cost you something. Yeah. Letting go will cost you your convenience. What do you mean I can't use the restrooms in the back? What do you mean the parking is bad? Letting go will cost you being comfortable. Yeah. Oh. We have people that are sitting in our overflow. Let's give it up for our overflow saints. They are now in the second overflow. That's not necessarily a comfortable thing, but because we are making room, we're having to say, okay, we got to move some stuff around. It will cost you your comfort. Letting go will cost you old mindsets and behavioral patterns. Letting go will cost you people. This is where we struggle because we think we can take everybody with us. But just because you was a part of my history doesn't give you access into my destiny. You got to look and make sure you are surrounding yourself in this season with people that have broke mindset that can see where God is taking you. If they cannot see it, you might need to let them go. Say this with me. Say letting go, letting go. is a decision. a decision. Say it again. Letting go, letting go. is a decision. decision. Letting go demands that you release every strand of worry Fear, doubt, anxiety that is related to that person, that situation, or outcome. You have to find the strength to let go so that you are not held hostage by false obligations. If she makes you feel some way because she don't feel like uh, she should go to Cheesecake Factory on the first date, that's a false obligation, saints. That's a false obligation. You might need to let, 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 let. You have to find the strength to let go so you won't be, man um, okay, this is, this is going to hit hard. This is going to hit hard. You have to find the strength to let go so you won't be manipulated by people, family members who try to make you feel guilty 
as if it was your responsibility to take care of grown Negroes. Sometimes you have to let that child learn to walk for themselves so they are not robbed of a legitimate testimony. You have to let go of unrealistic expectations of yourself. You are being too hard on yourself because you have these unrealistic expectations. I refuse in 2024 to do micromanagement. If I got to do my job and your job, then one of us ain't necessary. Now, some of you can't say amen because that's what you engage in. But I am not going to do it in, in 2024 because it's robbing me of energy. And sometimes it's energy that I don't even have. So I can't go after what God has for me because I don't spend my energy on you when you ain't carrying your weight. Yeah. Letting go of carrying the emotional weight of relationships. Yeah. All right. Why do I have to be the person that's carrying all of this weight? Now, letting go is difficult and it's hard because of this reason. Most of us don't want to let go because we don't want to be alone. Gladys said, I'd rather live in his world than without him. And that joking and ruin your credit. Your emotions are all over the place because you weren't willing to make a sacrifice. 2024 is the year of the sacrifice. You've got to look at things in your life and say, I know where God is taking me. So if I got to let go of this, if I got to let go of you, I'll let go. If I got to sleep alone, I'll sleep alone. If I got to eat alone, I'll eat alone. If I got to go to the movies by myself, I'll go to the movies by myself. I'll do things by myself because I am not going to allow myself to be held hostage because I don't want to be alone. Somebody said, you got to let it go. Here's a lesson. Isolation is the vehicle God uses to usher you into your next season. Isolation is the vehicle God uses to usher you into your next season. In our text, we encounter a man by the name of Jacob. Jacob is blessed. He's got a lot going on. But where the text pick up, Jacob is actually on the run. He's running from Laban. And for 20 years, he has been running from his brother Esau. But I realized this. God will sometimes create a situation to bring you into a revelation of what he's trying to do in your life. I'll say it again. God will use a situation to bring you to a revelation of what he's trying to do in your life. When the text picks up, Jacob has been left alone. Look at somebody and say alone. 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 He's separated from everyone. He sent his wives and his concubines and his children and his cattle. He sent everybody away. And he is alone. And verse 24 says this. He was left alone and a man wrestled with him. Yes. Now notice this. The fight did not happen when Jacob was around everybody. <laughs> it didn't happen when he had help. It happened when he was most vulnerable, when he was by himself. There are battles that you will face that your mama can't face it with you. There are battles that you will face that sometimes your husband or your wife can't face it with you. There are battles that you will face that you will have to face by yourself. You have to face it alone. Have you ever found yourself fighting a battle that no one knew? <laughs> This ain't the kind of message you preach on a Sunday morning because sometimes we want to be fake and like, no, no, no. Have you ever found yourself fighting something that the person next to you didn't even know? I, I would have never known that you was facing and that you were fighting and that you were dealing with these things. Jacob was alone. 
The second thing we see is it was at night. Somebody say at night. It wasn't in daylight where Jacob could see who he was fighting. It was at night. It's what uncertainty looks like because if we were really honest, there are moments where you would or are absolutely uncertain about what God is doing in your life. You are uncertain about God, what God is doing in your life. You are uncertain about what you are doing in this season in your life. You are uncertain about how things will turn out. It's dark. He can't see who he's fighting. He doesn't know who he's fighting because I've learned that God doesn't always show up wearing a sign. God doesn't always show up in the battle saying, I'm God. He, he disguised himself as a man. Sometimes God will disguise himself as a divorce. Sometimes God will disguise himself as the betrayal. And because we don't know that it's God, we do what Jacob did. We struggle with, do I have anybody in here that knows what it means to struggle with God? Okay, 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 okay. I know you want to talk about God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. But I got to be honest, there are some times when I'm struggling with, God, is this you? Matter of fact, God, are you even real? Where you at? What do you do when God shows up not looking like God? This is what it means to struggle with him, Keith. This is what it means to struggle with God. Verse 24 says, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Yeah. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, okay, pause. We know that this is God, that Jacob is fighting. What do you mean God could not overpower Jacob? <laughs> what do you mean the all-powerful God cannot overpower you. What area in your life does, do we struggle with God and God will say, okay, I can't overpower them, so I'm going to let them stay in this thing. You know what it is? We struggle with God in surrender and submission. So God has said, I'm going to let you struggle with this thing. I'm going to let you fight with this thing. I'm going to let you battle this thing because the problem is not the thing you're fighting. The problem is you don't want to surrender and you don't want to submit. The problem is not the thing you're fighting. The problem is, Chris, you don't want to surrender or to submit. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And here's where it gets really tricky. He says, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so he broke his hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Time out, time out, time out. This is a fight that Jacob wasn't looking for. God brought the fight to Jacob. And when God saw that he couldn't overpower him, God broke his. See, we hear about the God that saves, the God that heals him. The, the Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie. We talk about the God that heals, the God that delivers, the God that sets free. But God is showing us a different attribute of himself. What about the God that breaks? What do you do when you are wrestling and when you are struggling and you realize that God, when he's trying to get you to submit, God says, I will break. What do you do when it's God that's breaking you? Now, why does God break his hip? Somebody say, why, Pastor Chris? He broke his hip to take, take Jacob's ability to generate his own blessings. <laughs> because the hip, or one translation says the thigh muscle, it is the largest muscle in your body. 
And so if I am wrestling, my strength doesn't come from here. My strength comes from my lower body. So when God broke his hip, when God did that, he took Jacob's ability to empower his dysfunction. The thing that Jacob had been using to empower his dysfunction, God took that from you. You think that is the devil that's breaking you, but God is saying, I'm breaking this dysfunction off of your life because if I don't do it, you're going to keep going back to your default. But you cannot go into your next level carrying that. So if I got to break you, I will break you. So he broke his hip. Jacob could not generate his own blessings. The next thing is he took away Jacob's ability to run. Why would he take his ability to run? Because Jacob was a runner. He ran from Laban. He ran from Esau. And when things got tight in his life, what would he do? The question I have for you is what is your default? What do you do when it gets tight? What do you do when you are struggling? Do you resort to controlling? Do you resort to manipulating? What is your default? So God is saying, I want you to confront Jacob your default. I've learned this that God doesn't break you just to hurt you. When he broke Jacob's hip, he broke Jacob's cycle. I'm going to say it again. When he broke Jacob's hip, he broke Jacob's cycle. He broke the cycle of manipulating, the cycle of controlling, the cycle of worrying, the cycle of fixing and carrying the weight of everything. What is your cycle? What cycle is God trying to break off of your life? I want to encourage you because God doesn't break you just to hurt you. God breaks you to bless you. I'm, I'm talking to some people that are in the middle, if you were honest, in the middle of a real breaking. And I want to encourage you to don't let go and run away prematurely because he's not breaking. You see, God ain't like people. See, people will break you and hurt you because they don't like you and they're trying to kill you. But God is like, I am not breaking you to hurt you. I am breaking you to bless you. I am breaking you to bless you. And when you get that revelation, you will say, God, whatever you got to break off of my life, if it's pride, break it. If it's anger, break it. If it's control, break it. If it's manipulation, break it. Somebody shout, God, break it off of my life. Somebody shout, God. Break it off of my life. He's not breaking you to hurt you. He's breaking you to bless you. He's using the breaking to set you up for the greatest blessing that you have ever seen in your life. Verse 26 says, then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. Yeah. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. It hurts God, but I will not let you go. I don't understand why you break. I will not let you. God, it's the hardest thing that I've ever walked through in my life, but I will not let you. God, I don't understand it. My heart is broken. I never saw it coming, but I will not let you go. You are entering into a season where you have to say to God, Come what may, I will not 
let you go. Look at somebody and say, I will not let God go. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, don't let go. Don't let go. See, see, we, we hold on to the wrong things. We hold on to the disappointment. We hold on to the discouragement. But God is saying, I want you to let go of your default and hold on to God. I am talking to some people in this church that are about to let go, but God told me to encourage you. Before you let them go, understand that this breaking is a breaking that is designed to take you into the greatest season of your life. And when you know that, you make up in your mind that God, I will not let you go. I won't let you go. I won't let you go. It hurts, but I won't let you go. I won't let you go, God. I won't let you go. Here's why that's important. Because God is looking for commitment. (laughs) God is looking for commitment. He's looking, are you willing to do what you're supposed to do to break this thing, to get this thing broken off of your life? See, we submit to God until he starts breaking us. And when he breaks us, we want to run back to our default. But I believe I got six or seven people in here that say, God, I don't come too far. I don't know how this thing is going to turn out. But the one thing I know is that I'm going to hold to your hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on things eternal. You better hold. Do I have anybody in here that knows what it means to hold to God? When he broke his leg, he broke his default. But the thing that he didn't take from Jacob is Jacob's ability to cling to him. He might have broken your default, but the one thing God will never take is your ability to hold on to him. Look at somebody and say, hold on to God. Hold on to God. Hold on to God. He'll bless you if you don't, if you don't let go. He'll bless you if you hold on. I got to work this because I'm going to tell you there are people that look like they're good, but I'm going to tell you if you don't give up, God will bless your life. Hold on to God. It required commitment. That is how you survive the breaking of the Lord. And if you ain't been broken yet, keep living. Sometimes it comes in the form of grief. And it ain't the devil. Stop giving him credit. It's God because your purpose is so great that he will not let you live and die in stuff that everybody else is living and dying in. So God is saying, that one right there, she's the key to the family. So I'm going to break it off of her because when I break it off of her, I'm breaking it off of everything that's connected to her. When God is breaking it off of you, he is breaking it off of everything. Oh God, I know it's Sunday morning, but the breaking is not about you. The breaking is not about you. The breaking is what's connected to you. It's about what's connected to you. Break me, God. Break my will. Break my will. Break my anger. Break this frustration. Break this bitterness. If you got to break it, God, I submit to the breaking. Break it off of me. I cannot waste any more time. I don't have time to waste. Break it, God. Break it, break it, break it. 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 Tell your neighbor, let him break it. Let him break it. 
let them break it. I know I need a new move on, but God, let, let them break it. Let them break it. Let them break it. Hold on. Don't let go. Because he'll bless you. He'll bless you. If you just hold on. The next thing God requires is a confession. The first thing was the commitment, willing to commit to the breaking of the Lord. The second thing is you got to be willing to confess. <laughs> Verse 27, put that on the screen. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob responded, my name is Jacob. Now that seems like a rhetorical question, but I've learned that when God asks a rhetorical question, it ain't that because God doesn't know the answer to it. It's sometimes because we don't know the answer to the question that God is asking us. <laughs> Here's why this is important. In ancient cultures, your name denoted your nature or your character. So your name, it denoted who you really were. They didn't just name them Shaquisha. Oh, Mark Christopher, that's my name. I don't know why my mama named me Mark Christopher. Did you want Marcus and Christopher together and just put them together? No, the name denoted their character. Can you imagine being Jacob, being in school, and they're doing role, and they're saying, Bobby here, Sarah here, Jacob here. I mean, not Jacob, uh, Sarah, uh, 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 who's on the, what's on the, being here, supplanter, yeah. deceiver. Trickster, manipulator, control freak. What is your? I know your mama named you Anna, but what is? I know she named you Jeffrey, but what is your name? See, the real problem here, Jacob's real problem wasn't with Esau. His real problem was with himself. The greatest enemy to your destiny is not the enemy. It's the inner me. The greatest impediment to your destiny is not the enemy. It is the inner me. The me that you cannot see. The me that I hide. The secret me. The shadow me. And everybody in this sanctified church. I don't care how saved and how, how washed up you are. Everybody's got a, a secret me that you cannot see. See, Jacob had the cash. He had the cattle, but he didn't have the character. That shows me that you can be successful, but that don't mean you have character. I know a whole lot of successful people that have no character at all. God is saying, before I release you into this next season, you are going to have to deal with that nasty nature that you are hiding from everybody else. Look at somebody say, you're going to have to deal with it. Look at somebody say, you're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have, you can't shout past this one. You're going to have to deal with it. Because after you're done shouting, guess what? The problem's still there. After you're done speaking in tongues, guess what? You're going to have to deal with that nasty character. Chris, what is your name? The question God is asking this sanctified church is what is your name? Because God is saying this. I won't let you live like an imposter. Y'all ever heard of imposter syndrome? Yeah. Imposter syndrome is the person that you put out ain't really who you are. See, this is what happens when you get married and you come home from, uh, from, from your honeymoon and y'all been together for about three weeks and the real her shows up. Because you weren't dating the real her, you was dating the representative the 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 imposter see we 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 bring we bring the sanctify part to church but the imposter is out in the workplace the imposter is the person that'll cut you out at the drop of a hat but we'll get in church and say 
to God be the glory. The imposter will give you the finger when you, when you get in front of them in traffic. You got to deal with that imposter because that imposter syndrome will cause you to self-sabotage your life. The imposter will cause you to self-sabotage your life. For example, can I give you a good example? You in a relationship and you've been praying for God to send you a good man or a good woman. God, he answers your prayer and sends it to you. Then, there's something in you that don't really want that because that's not comfortable. <laughs> so you will engage in self-sabotaging behavior and push the good man out and get the joker that ain't good for nothing because he's comfortable. I want you to know you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. And you wonder why you keep surrounding yourself with dysfunctional people, baby. It ain't your mama. It ain't your cousin. The problem is with you. It ain't this person. It ain't that person. The problem is with me. You got to deal with that imposter. You got to deal with the imposter. Here's a big idea. The degree to which a person can grow is predicated on the amount of truth they can accept about themselves without running away. Okay, I'm going to say it again. The degree to which a person can grow, I'm trying to help you. You know me, I don't, I don't, I don't care nothing about your amens. I'm preaching to your Monday and your Tuesday and your Wednesday. But I want you to get this. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? It says, the degree to which a person can grow is predicated on the amount of truth they can accept about themselves without running away. How much truth can you accept about you before you take off running? And you're praying, God, send me the blessing. God, send me the man. But God says, I won't put more on you than you're able to bear. I don't put more on you than you have the capacity to manage. So stop asking for a blessing that you can't handle. You can sing about above and beyond and preach about it. But God has said, I can't release it if you can't handle it. So before I release it to your structure, I got to make sure that you are strengthening some things. I got to make sure that you are letting go of some things. I got to make sure that you're willing to confront some things. You have to confront some stuff. You might have to go to counseling. You might have to get therapy. Because what we like to do is blame it on everybody else. Well, I didn't get this from my mama, and I didn't get this from my daddy. And I understand that that, that that plays a part, but at some point, you got to realize, God, I'm responsible for my destiny. I cannot keep hell being held victim to something that I did not get. I love when Pastor Travis preached, have a conversation. You have to stop blaming people. Because when you do the blame game, you don't really fix or change anything. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Jacob didn't just get that himself. Jacob got the lying and the manipulating. He got it honest. Some of the mess you're dealing with, it didn't start with you. See, Jacob's dad was Isaac. Isaac lied about his wife, Rebecca. Isaac's dad was Abraham. Abraham lied about his wife Sarah and you wonder why Jacob has a problem with lying it didn't start with him that thing has been in your generation for two and three and four generations and by the time it gets to you it's so potent that you are facing a stronghold that you can't see how to get out of you know why he's a manipulator his mama was who gave him the idea to take his brother's brother's birthright His mama goes to him and says, listen, your daddy getting old and he can't see. Let me show you how to work this thing. And Jacob just does what his mama tells him. What, what, what were you exposed to at a young age? That you are now living out that script and you, don't, and you think it's the devil. It ain't the devil. No, it's a generational curse that's been in operation for years. But God told me to tell you he's about to introduce you to the curse breaker. Oh my God, oh my God. See, the enemy don't want you to come into the awareness of this knowledge. 
He wants you to keep shadow boxing. I don't know why I keep doing this same thing. I don't know why I keep sleeping with this one. I don't know why I keep getting so angry. I don't know why, but I'm giving you information. I'm giving you knowledge. It's the enemy now that you can see. And God says, now that you can see it, I'm going to show you how to defeat that devil. I'm going to show you how to break that thing off of your life. Yes, it was a generational curse, but you don't have to take it with you into this next season. God is here to break it off of your life. Now, how, how, do you, how, how does he break it? Here's how. When you confess, you are doing something really, 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 really important. Because you will never be able to change until you are willing to openly, honestly, and authentically admit your sin. Your weaknesses, your faults, your frailties, and your character defects. You will not be able to change until you are willing to say, God, it's not my mother, it's not my father. God, it is me. God, it is me. Here's why confession is important. Confession requires honesty. Somebody say honesty. honesty. Somebody say vulnerability. vulnerability. Somebody say humility. humility. Somebody say honesty. honesty. Somebody say vulnerability. vulnerability. Somebody say humility. Honesty, Honesty. Vulnerability. vulnerability, humility. 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 humility is important because when you refuse to humble yourself, what you are saying is, I'm proud. Yeah. And James 4 and 6 reveals who you fight. For it says God opposes the proud. So you ain't fighting the devil. You ain't fighting your ex-husband. God is saying because you are so proud, because Chris, you are so proud, you are in opposition with me. But here's the thing that I want you to understand. The B clause of that text says, but he gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Now, what is grace? Grace is the power to make changes. Oh God, God says, he says, I've been opposing you, but because now you have humbled yourself and you're willing to admit your frailties, admit that it's me, God says, now I'm about to receive a grace into your life so that you can change something that you thought you would never be able to change. God is getting ready to release into the potter's house of North Dallas a grace for you to make changes. Now, if you don't need to make no change, keep your mouth closed. But if there are some things that you need to change in your life, if there are things that you have been fighting that you couldn't seemingly get the victory over, God said today, January the 21st, I am releasing over your life the grace to make changes, the grace to change some stuff, the grace to deal with the generational curse. Based on identification, I need to know who needs that grace. Yeah, yeah. 16 over here, 22 over here, 14 right here. Ain't nobody over here need it. No, 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 no. Stacey, I, I need to know who is willing to say, God, I'm messed up. I'm pulling the mask off. I am confessing that I need you to break this. So, God, release. The grace, if you need the grace, take 60 seconds and give God the praise that he's worthy of. Yep. If you don't need it, keep your mouth closed. If you don't need to change some things, they confront some things, don't say nothing. But if you've been trying and failing, if you take two steps forward and get knocked three steps back, God said, I am here to help you make some changes in your life. Give God what belongs to him. Because this is your part. God said, I'll break it, but you're going to have to you're going to have to admit. You're going to have to be willing to confess. And then I will give you the grace. Your part is to confess. God's part is to release the grace. 
Your part is to own up to it. God says when you do, I'll release a grace. That's when people see you and they see you in like 10 years and they're like, you look new. I don't know who you are. You know why? Because I got the grace, baby. <laughs> oh my God, you used to cuss people out when, you, when they pushed them. Oh no, I got the grace, baby. No, 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 no. That's who I was. That is not who I am. I am walking in grace. The grace to make changes. The grace to break cycles off of my life. I need that grace. 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 I can't move. I need that grace. I need that grace. The enemy didn't want you to know that. He want you to think that it's him fighting you. But God says, I'm giving you the key to unlock the door to your next level. When you humble yourself under the mighty hand, I'll give you a grace that don't make sense. You've been fighting stuff for the last 16 years, but God told me to tell you, this is the last day that you will be haunted by that thing. He is releasing the grace for you to make some change. Lift your hands, baby. Right there in the green, right there in the green. He's releasing a grace for you to make some changes. You've been trying to do it, God. You've been trying. I'm trying, God. I'm trying. And you couldn't do it by yourself. But God told me to tell you, he's about to break it off of your life. He's about to break it. He's about to break it. He's about to break it. Lift your hands. And I want you to receive this grace. Receive this grace. He's breaking it off of your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. Shall break it. Break it. Break it. He's breaking it off of your life today. You won't have to fight that devil. It won't even your devil to fight. But he's breaking it today. He's breaking it today. He's breaking it today. He's breaking it today. If you need a breaking, if you need a breaking, I want you to open your mouth. I want you to lift your voice. It's broken, bro. It's broken. I'm serious. I ain't even got to be super spiritual with you, but you've been fighting for a long time. But bro, I just want to dap you up. Can I dap you up? I can dap you up. I thought I was in a church full of free folk. So when I'm in a church full of free folk, you know what it felt like to be bound. But he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. so quick to move on but God is setting some people free that's been fighting generational curses that started with your great 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 grandmama he's setting you free he's setting you free he's setting you free he's breaking it off of your life you are walking in freedom. You are walking in freedom. No more chains holding you. God, the chain breaker, has come to set you free. Give God a praise. The devil didn't want you to get to this part. But he couldn't stop it. He didn't want you to hear this word because he wanted you to go through 2024 facing the same stuff. But God says, today you are free.
feel you, Holy Ghost. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. That spirit of anger, broken. <laughs> that spirit of anger, broken. Brothers, that spirit of anger that started with your daddy, broken. The spirit of perversion, broken. The spirit of bitterness, broken. 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 2024 is the year of the free. It is the year of the free. It's the year of the free. I'm no longer bound. No more chains. Chains of oppression over my mind. My soul is resting. I'm going to say it again. My soul is resting. Oh, I'm not calling anymore with this devil. My soul is resting. But it's just a blessing. <laughs> Here it is. You ready? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Ah. Oh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The highest praise. I am I might not finish this one because God has jumped on the scene right now. But if you've been fighting devils that you didn't quite know why you were fighting or devils that you didn't feel like you would ever get the victory over I want to I want to give you about about three minutes because now you're walking in freedom I'm gonna give you 120 seconds to give God a crazy praise if you got to jump jump If you gotta run, run. Because he's setting you free. You got 30 seconds. We almost there. That's really cute right there. That's really cute. Break out this one drum. God did not set that ham and organ free. God did not break depression off of that keyboard. God did not break perversion off of that bass. But God, who is rich in mercy, He's not poor. He's rich in mercy. Oh! Yes, I'm free. 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 And I'm glad about it. Yes, I'm free. And I'm glad about it. Yes, I'm free. I'm glad about it. Yes, I'm free, free. Yes, I'm free, free. Yes, I'm free. Yes, I'm free. That's the power of a testimony. Give me some more on the stage. That's the power of a testimony. Because I know where I was when he found me. I ain't been saved all my life. I had my proclivities and propensities. But when God reached down, Oh! And pull me out of what had me head. You think he's not a bad me for a praise? Because he didn't have to do it. But he did. And 
because he did. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Thankful. I'm so thankful. Yes, I am. I'm so grateful. Yes, I am. I'm so yes, I am. I'm so grateful. Yes, I am. I'm so grateful. Yes, I am. I'm so grateful. Yes, I am. Yes, I love you. Yes, I yes, I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I praise you. Yes, I will. Yes, I praise you. Yes, I will. So good. Yes, you have so good. Yes, you have so good. Yes, you have so good. That's it right there. Give me some room so I can dance. 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 He 
could have stopped there. Because they deserved it. What he said, I am the God of Jacob. Do I have any Jacobs in here? That because you humbled yourself, he's changing your name. He's changing your nature. He's breaking it off of you. And it's no more Jacob, but it's Israel. Because you have prevailed. This is your season.